Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a scene outside a bustling party supply and craft store just before closing time. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Scolded for closing a store I don't work at. This happened a couple weeks ago. I made a quick run to a party supply slash craft store for a cake project I was working on. Place closes at 8, I got there at 7.45, found my item within 10 minutes, paid, went out to my car. I'm sitting in my parking space still at 7.57, just reading the packaging of my purchase to double check something, when this other car pulls up beside me. I see this white woman in her late 50s get out, I can see her walk to the store entrance from my rear view mirror, the automatic doors don't open for her. I go back to reading my packaging and look up when I hear a woman's voice near my closed window, something something closed. Politely, I cracked my window down like a centimeter to actually hear her. She was ranting that they were closed, and I was like, oh yeah, they close at 8 now, I guess. She cuts me off. It's not 8 yet. You're not supposed to be closed yet. It's 7.58. Me. Uh, I don't work there. She cuts me off again. I don't care if it's two minutes or two seconds to eight, it's illegal to close early. She's kind of close to my car, so I don't want to just pull out and tap her with the car mirror and have her sue me or something, which is why I didn't leave yet. I firmly, a bit louder, repeat, I do not work there. Woman, big, obnoxious, exaggerated arm gesture to empty parking lot using this loud, antagonistic, sing-songy tone, I don't see any other cars here, insinuating I must be lying about being an employee. Pretty sure employees parking that place is behind the building. She moved over a bit when she did that grand arm gesture, giving me room to comfortably pull away, so I started the car. As I rolled up the window, I said, I am a customer, you effing banana, and I held up my receipt to the glass, then shifted in reverse. She was still yelling something when I left. And to be clear, there couldn't be any real reason for this lady to assume I work there. It's mainly run by teenagers. I'm in my late 30s, and I wasn't wearing any work-like attire or name tags. I was in a loungy crap, gave up on life heather gray colored joggers and multicolored flannel shirt. Employees wear bright solid colored shirts and not sweatpants. It's hilarious how some people think stores and restaurants are public property that legally must be open certain times. And our next story. Karen gets an electric shock from my fence. Let me preface what I'm about to tell you with a little background info. I'm retired from health and rescue after over five decades. I'm now legally blind, but at the time of the following events, I still had my vision somewhat intact. Because of health issues, I ended up having to recreate the golden years of my life. I chose to raise trees and parrots. My son lived 1,500 miles away, so I lived alone. A geriatric wheelchair-bound old biddy who chose to live by the beat of my own drum? Cherokee, Blackfoot, Jew? What I'm about to disclose to you is retold using security footage, legal documents, or reconstructed by the way of memory, so parts might be a bit cattywampus to what actually occurred. But I assure you, I will attempt to be as close to accurate as possible. There was a catalyst event that started the following events. I'll not disclose what occurred. Safe to say, police were called and warnings were issued to the neighbors and the strongest wording the police could legally give. That initiating event only seemed to light fires under them. Little did the police or I know these two wolves were created with DNA that consisted of dynamite, TNT, and nuclear warheads. I was about to learn a lesson of a lifetime, a lesson that was both unwanted and undeserved, but nevertheless, a life lesson straight out of the Outer Limits, or Twilight Zone. Decades ago, I'd purchased acres of land from a family member. Most lands are grandfathered in under tribal laws, so I started planting on land that sat untouched. The acres up north were completed, homes fully operational, off-grid, so I focused on acreage here, southern land, where the events in this story occurred. The shape of the 40.2 acres looked like a cooking pot with an S-shaped handle from high above. I had my home built in the eastern slash southern corner of the pot and started planting southern zone trees 18 years ago, 
many different fruit and nut trees. One special tree, an olive tree from God's holy lands of Jerusalem. One day, my tree man contacted me asking if I was interested in purchasing cherry trees from Japan. He warned me there were bluebirds chirping about a possible import ban in the near future, so I jumped at that chance and obtained two of them, a male and a female. I thought to myself, where in the holy hell am I going to plant these trees? My acreage was full, so I planted them near my southern home, like one would do for shade on hot summer days. Little did I know that would be the wisest choice I could have made on many levels. The first season they bloomed. Their fragrance could be enjoyed a mile away on a calm wind day. Their blooms proved to be one of the most beautiful things one could see, making them become the showcase of my home. They're the first things your eyes scan to, and you become mesmerized by their enchanting beauty and fragrance. One of the many, many gifts from God. Throughout the following years, I noticed the female tree would throw babies every third season, sometimes every second. The roots of these saplings could, as they grow, strangle any trees near them, so they had to be uprooted and replanted in free ground. I planted them along the sides of my winding driveway, about a mile long, the S-shaped handle, and along the sides of my home, like a gift-wrapped home of cherry blossoms. The land to my left was rocky, soiled land. The land adjacent to my S-shaped drive east side is still owned by the city and is marked as marshlands. The west side of my property is developed with homes now, but was undeveloped land at the time of this story. Not earth that one could easily plant on, but some developer bought it and sectioned it into about three-quarter acre plots and built one home on the most southern plot. Years after this crazy mess ended, that developer built homes on the rest of those plots. When the new homeowners moved in, my years-long nightmare began. I put up chain-linked electric fencing and, unknown to neighbors, full audio-video day-night security cameras because I was having fruits, nuts, and vegetables from my garden come up missing the following season they moved in. All hell broke out the following spring, a year I had baby cherry saplings pop up, nine of them to be exact for that season. I let them grow to a safe replanting age and rolled out in my wheelchair with buckets of water and a shovel in hand to get to work. As I was on the ground busy digging up babies, the neighbor, I'll call Karen from here on in, came out of her house demanding to know what I was doing. I informed her I was digging up the saplings to give to the neighbor who lived north of my acreage. She went from one to a hundred in a tenth of a second screaming at me about how I couldn't do what I'm doing, that the trees belonged to her, and I had to give them to her. I informed her that would not be happening. This angered her even more, and she advanced toward me, spewing verbal vomit and anger. When she put a foot and hands on my fencing, six feet of electrified climbing challenge, and what to me was an attempt to climb over, she got the shock of her life. After she regained her breath, her verbal vomit became pathetically comical. I just kept repeating, my land, my fencing, my property, my trees, I will do as I please, Karen. Her response to being called Karen, who's Karen? I'm not Karen. Stop calling me Karen. I quickly grew tired of this tornado of spinning verbal vomit, put my shovel into the earth upright, using it to upright my body and climb back into my chair, grabbed the bucket that had a few saplings and yelled, bye-bye, Karen. As I was waiting for my wheels to engage, I watched Karen go back into her house and I went into mine. About 30 minutes later, I had my parrot screaming. Someone was ringing my bell and knocking. My camera showed three police officers when I answered and asked what I could do for them, they informed me they received complaints I stole trees and assaulted someone a little while ago, and if I knew anything about it, I said, follow me, and rolled them to the saplings I still needed to uproot. They asked me if I was planting them. I said, no, I'm digging them up so they don't murder each other. They asked, where are the trees you're accused of stealing? I rolled them to my work shed where I placed the bucket and explained how I had to uproot the babies because their roots strangle each other. They then asked me to take them to where the supposed assault happened. I rolled them back to the saplings in the ground, pointed to the fence line, and said, There. They asked, Where? Clearly, they were confused. At this time, Karen ran out and started her verbal vomit again. Both cops tried getting her to calm down and return to her home to no avail. They called for backup. After what seemed an eternity of ear-shattering, nauseating verbal vomit from her, she was manhandled into submission by four of our finest in blue and pulled back into her home. The two cops with me asked if I could try to be a little more clear as to what had occurred because she was clearly incensed in anger. 
I asked the cops to not believe a word I say. Both cops' eyes bugged out of their sockets and their mouths dropped to the ground because in any argument, there are always three sides. Her side, my side, and the truth. They both quickly said, okay, what exactly is the truth? Almost in unison. Without saying a word, I pulled my cell from my wheelchair pocket, pulled up my security archives app, narrowed in on the time in question, and put the cell on speaker with the volume turned up to max, pushed play, and handed the cell to them. When they got to the point where I started addressing Karen as Karen, they both started gut laughing, and one asked if I was a Reddit reader. I said, sometimes, mostly YouTube. I then pulled up county land titles and deeds and showed them my property lines, how my fence line was 15 feet inside my property lines for easements in case of emergencies to allow emergency vehicles. Fire is a real threat to lives and livelihood, people. I then pulled up the receipt, import, export clearance documents, and clear description of the Japanese cherry trees, making sure they notice my name, my address, my signature of receipt, and dates and times. One cop walked back to their car, and the other explained my rights to have her trespassed, which I said, yes. He then said he would file trespassing on her and explained to her that she could be criminally charged should she continue her abusive activities. He then walked to his car, and I wheeled to the front of my home and watched them talk with each other on my cell using my live audio-video surveillance app. After a short while, one of the cops that was in Karen's house came out and walked up to them, and they continued talking while one of them was riding on a clipboard. Two of them then walked back into Karen's house. Very quickly after, I could hear Karen's verbal vomit permeate the air with a vile, nauseating green haze of disgusting epithets. Then as quickly as the verbal assaults began, a calming, peaceful quiet crystallized in the air, as if to try cleansing it with a touch of serenity. According to what investigators and my lawyer were able to piece together, Karen's sister, who happened to work for the county court's office, pushed through falsified fraudulent police reports to have the county's prosecutor file formal charges against me. The grand theft was built on lies that I had stolen all the Japanese cherry trees in my land. By then, I had 72 of them. They claimed each tree was worth $550 each. I was accused of stealing $30,600 in trees. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. 